Damn it all, staying calm isn't exactly my forte. Yeah, I know, Alize. We meet again. You you do remember me, yes? Of course I do. You saved my skin twice over in Niedlimad, and now I find myself turning to you for help once more. But let us tarry here no longer. Okay, Alfino, where are we going? We must save Palaka's stand, whatever it takes. Matsya, it pains me to put you into harm's way, but I would ask your aid as well. Of course, Palaka's stand is not far, just down that hill. But as I told His Excellency before, the path was blocked by terrible creatures. I had no choice but to turn back. In that case, this is what we shall do. Alia, I ask that you take the lead and dispatch to any beasts you encounter. Alize and I will keep Matsi hidden amidst the trees and follow when the path is clear. Roger, roger. Yes, yes sir. There's no telling what dangers await us. Keep your eyes peeled. Good work, Alia. Do I worry for Matsya? Why? W what's happened to them? Oh no. Keep calm, Matsya. Keep calm. Oh. Okay. Trouble music. It. It cannot be. They're all about to turn, aren't they? We must heal those we can, and quickly! I see no beasts, but stay on your guard! Am I healing people? Who do I have to heal? Oh. Do I see this right? Is one of them saying horizontal here? Yes. The villager has no pulse, nor do they appear to be breathing. I think the same is this one. Cooling body has already begun to stiffen. The massive wounds suggest the villager was gored by a terrible beast. Why are we always late? Though the villager's injuries do not appear to be life-threatening, he does not respond to your efforts. His breathing grows more ragged and shallow, and his vacant eyes are those of a man who has lost the will to live. Even if I wake, the nightmare goes on. No. Leave me to sleep. <clears throat> and then he goes. Come on, get to your senses. Have yeah. you come to help us? Too late. Too late. My family, my friends. Oh no. Why do I have a feeling that everyone here will start turning? Are these the only villagers who survived? I can only hope others managed to flee, but if the rest have been turned to beasts by the twelfth, let us do what we can to see that the damage spreads no further, and no matter what comes, we must keep our spirits high, lest we ourselves suffer a similar fate. I can tend to the rest. Pray look after Matsya. No doubt what we have seen here weighs even heavier on his heart than ours. Okay, Alfino. Whatever you say, son. Whatever you say. Oh, Alia! Alia! This is Yeruvet, the elder here. He's hurt, but praise be to the sisters, he still lives. Young Matsya here has told me everything. I have not the words to express my gratitude for your aid. When the heavens began to burn, we were afraid, but did our best to carry on as we always have done. Until today, when those unholy beasts came pouring into our village, a flood of midnight and death. There are no words to describe what followed. Men and women I have known since they were babes struck down by the creatures, only to rise again to join the murderous horde in the guise of those same hideous fiends. In the chaos, a handful of our villagers fled for their lives. I can only hope they have found their way to safety. Matsya, do you perchance remember Karasov and Mehwan? 
the young couple who always bought your freshest catches. How could I forget, Elder? When I first came to peddle my wares, desperate to eke out a living, they showed me such kindness. Others shunned me as an outsider, as is their way. But Kerasov and Mehwan bought my fish and sung its praises. They turned my fortunes around. Alas, I fear they're in terrible danger. I saw them running towards the Gama Temple, one of those beasts in close pursuit. They had their child, still but a tiny babe. To elude these fins while caring for one so young is an impossible task, surely. I beg of you, go to their aid. I, I want to help them. Yet I am but a fisherman, I cannot face beasts on my own. Will you come with me? Yes. Oh, thank you. Agama Temple lies to the west of here. We must hurry. I have a bad feeling about leaving my children here, just saying. I fear for their lives all the time. The temple is just ahead. It was built by those who worship Saint Agama, but has sadly fallen into dis disrepair in recent years. If my friends made it this far, no doubt they're hiding somewhere amidst the ruins. No, please, stay back! Oh no. That was Karasov! Oh no, this is not good! Wait here, Matsya. Y yes, I understand. The cry came from the ruins, you must hurry. That's exactly what I'm going to do. S so stay here. You may not like what you're about to see. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh, th that is not the wife and the child, uh, right? The man lies motionless on the ground, bearing a grievous wound. I'm sorry, Alia. I tried to stay behind, but I couldn't. It cannot be. Is someone? Anyone? Yes, we are here. My arms, so heavy. And my legs. I cannot feel my legs. My wife fled with our daughter. I need to find them. Need to be with them. I need... No, 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 no. Karasov, no, Karasov, you must stay strong! More time. I thought I had. I don't want to die. Thank you. My one still lives. And she has their child. So it wasn't the daughter. Anymore. Yeah. For a moment I got really scared. Yeah. We must search the jungle between here and Palaka stand. There's nowhere else she could have gone. I think. What is it, Matsya? Oh, you're looking at your friend? Forgive me, Karasov. Once we have saved your wife and child, we will return and lay you to rest. I love this song, by the way. If Mehan and her daughter came through this area recently, you see no evidence of their passage. Where are they? Matsya, I couldn't find them. D did you see any sign of them? I found nothing. Me neither. Perhaps the beasts have chased them farther from the village. Oh God, Zabal, I beseech you. Pray deliver Mehwan and her little one to safety. Meanwhile in the sky is above Thavnir. Oh, Estinian time. No more enemies to trouble us here. Thank you. 
It's Can me. you please hold on to something, Estrian? Holding on to his wits. Understood. I will inform Vritra. Chaos and panic sweep Raz at Han, and many more have succumbed to the transformations. Amidst the fray, Ahawan fell, protecting a grief-stricken father. <sighs> My friends fight alongside your radiant host to secure the capital. Beasts have been sighted in Palakas stand as well. We have divided our forces in hopes of quelling the threat there. Of small solace is that we now know what triggers the transformation. As my companions tell it, so you need to give them hope. So it is the very fear and despair in their hearts which inflicts this abhorrent punishment upon them. A nightmare for which my children will never awake. Oh, capricious and cruel fate, they are undeserving of such condemnation. Will you wallow in sorrow or rise to the occasion? Razat Han is leaderless. Before he passed, Ahawan sought to reveal the truth to his people. Honor his wishes. To what end? To breed a new conflict between dragon and man. Oh, come on, Ritra. These claws could reduce thee to shreds with a touch. These jaws crush thy bones to dust. Only through my proxy could I walk with my children. Without him, I am a bringer of fear. No different from the beasts which beleaguer them. So, only in death were Hreisvelga and Shiva united. Indeed, whenever man and dragon have come together, death has ever been the inevitable result. It was our fear of your kind that sparked a nigh endless war. Fear and hate of which Nidhogg drank deep as he laid waste to my homeland. And in turn, I took my revenge on his brood. Blood for blood, pain for pain. I thought nothing of theirs, only of mine. And yet, were the chasm between us too vast and too deep, Kreisvelga would not have borne his sail to battle and our rescue. He would never have entrusted a mortal champion with one of his eyes. And the Dragonsong War would still rage on. And I would still wage a never-ending war of violence and vengeance. The future of our star be damned. I cannot speak for Ahuan's greater goals, yet I know that he served you, served your people, long and true. In this time of unprecedented crisis, he turned to you. You could do worse than to place your trust in him. It will not be easy, but the future of Radzid Han hangs in the balance. Company. Be careful, all right? I am ready. Yeah. <laughs> the hour has come, Vritra. It's all or nothing. Yay, trailer sentences. If Melwan fled deeper into the jungle, she and her child are in grave danger. Whatever are we to do? God have mercy! You must try to stay calm, Matsya. You cannot let fear consume you. Or do you want to turn into a beast like the others? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to tell him to stay calm. But how can I at a time like this? They could be dead! If you succumb, you turn. So, if I allow myself to be overcome by this fear, I too might become a beast? I'm not sure I understand, but I will do my best. Oh, they're here. 
I have seen to the wounded. How did the two of you fare? Did you find your friends? I see. In that case, let us help you find the mother and child. Before we leave, we must ensure the village will be safe in our absence. Alize and I will patrol the area and search for more beasts. Would you and Matsya speak with Elder Yeruvet? Pray explain to him the situation and join us as soon as you're able. We will save Mehwan and her child. We can do that much for Karasov. I'm heartened to see you both safe, but what of the family? We found Karasov, but he... Say no more. I understand. We have lost another of our dear friends. Karasov may be gone, but there's still hope for Mehwan and their child. Please find them, I beg of you. And if in your search you come across anyone else who escaped the slaughter, pray tell them what has happened. I'll do my best to keep the villagers safe and their spirits high. Come, let us rejoin your friends at once. We encountered no beasts during our patrol, thankfully. Matsya. Where might Mahwan have run off to? Think Matsya, think. I'm pleased to report that the vicinity appears to be beast-free, no doubt thanks to your earlier efforts. And with that, let us resume our search for your friend and her child. Where should we begin, Matsya? If you follow Xiroda south, we will arrive at Prusa, a temple. It's a sacred place where people go to commune with the divinities. It's possible that Mawan sought shelter here, and perhaps other villagers as well. Then it's settled, Matsya. Stay close to me, all right? You two take the lead. Keep an eye out for beasts and anyone in need of help. Very well. We make for Prusa as quickly as we're able. With me! Let's go, Alfino. Oh no. No, 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 no. Stay away. Come on. Go back to the village. Thank you, I thought I was done for. Mehwan? She's a friend of mine too, but I have not seen her. She must still be out there somewhere, trying to avoid the beasts. And with her child. Gods. Worry not for me, I can make my way back to the village on my own. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, you ran literally towards a crocodile. I'm not entirely sure about yeah, that. Good luck. <laughs> Alia, wait. Cruiser lies just up ahead, but something terrible has happened. The beasts have come, and many have already been killed. Alfino and Elise have gone to do what they can, but there are so, so many. More than I could count. You must be ready. No, 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 my children. No, 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 don't. Don't even think about hurting them. There you are. How fair the others? One of them turned. I see. You have seen to all the beasts in sight? In that case, let's have everyone gather in front of the temple. Okay, at least the music is calm. For now. So many. Yeah. Is Mel on here? Friend. The pain will pass. Has anyone seen Mevan? Where could she be? We've dealt with all the blasphemies and made certain no villagers are still in hiding. Good work. We've otherwise tended to the wounded as best we can. Did you tell them what What will become of us? You shouldn't give in to despair to begin with. Help is on the way, surely. We may have to abandon our homes now, but we will return someday. But where can we go? Is anywhere even safe? No. Uh, probably not. That I cannot say. Well, I can. Nowhere safe. Run all you like, but there's no escape in these things. Please, please don't. Uh 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 uh. And even if I could. <laughs> it's too late for my family. Please don't. Don't. You will turn. <laughs> Thank you.
This isn't good. The more they dwell on the tragedy, the more likely we are to lose them, too. My friends, this... This is a place of worship. Should your heart quake with sadness, cast your mind to the heavens and remember. Remember the teachings of the old gods. Did they not implore us to stand fast when waves of sorrow break against our shores? Oh, Matsya is encouraging them. Know this, my children. There is more ugliness than beauty in this world. Children? I mean, how old are you exactly? To live is Maybe to she's suffer. a priestess. To drink oh. of calamity and drown in anguish. To toil and be tested, always and ever. Tis a perilous path you walk. Death lurks in the dark and is the sole promise that awaits at journey's end. You will tremble with terror. You will weep tears of anger and despair. But do not avert your eyes. See your life for what it is. Then will you see how the hardships make you strong. Every doubt reforged as scales for your armor. Every agony to temper your blade. Thank you, lad. We'd almost forgotten who we are. That little nod. My undying gratitude to you as well, my friends. You were searching for Mevan, no? We must return home. I pray you help the boy find his friend. Gladly. We dispatched what beasts we could, but the roads are still dangerous. Stay together and go in safety. Yeah, be careful, guys. I wouldn't want to kill you. <laughs> that was very impressive, what you did back there. Those words seem to resonate with your people. They should. They were the first spoken unto our ancestors by the divinity of legend. I'm easily upset, and fish are wont to flee a temperamental hand. So I recite the teachings over and over to calm myself. Oh. They're lovely and inspiring to hear, though I imagine they were born of great misfortune. They are born of life. There's as much bad as good in it. More, many would attest. All the more reason to appreciate the good when I can. I won't argue with that. It's basically life sucks. Yeah. But it's in darkness, the moments that count. seek joy. Surrender not to sadness. And see beyond despair. Walk free, and bear the light for others to follow. Thanks, Mom. And with that, let us see if we can't find Mev. Uh-oh. Did you see? That beast was chasing someone. We must go after them at once. Yeah, Matsya. Oh, oh, was that Melvin? Alizai. 
Over there, my view was blocked by the trees, but I'm sure I saw someone being chased by a beast. Alia, go with Matsya and search along the river. Alfano and I will circle around from the south. Please don't. Alice, I'll no. No, I'm, I'm sure of it. Never! Don't, please! <laughs> Yay! Step in. No, 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 please. No. No. God have mercy. Well, we can't. Oh. Spin. Well, we can breathe underwater. That's the most important part. <laughs> Come on. Come on, girl. Where's the child? That was lifeless, buddy. Oh no. Better than broken. Her death, no doubt, came swiftly. Her infant daughter, however, is nowhere to be seen. Oh. No, please don't be dead. Please. You take the baby into your arms. If she yet lives, you cannot tell. But she will surely not survive unless you carry her to the surface at once. Oh no, 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 no. What do we do? What do we do? I, I got the child. Avner can heal her. Did you find Mervan and the child? Well, she's dead, but the child is here. Damn it all! You have the child? Let me see her. Come on, please heal her. She's so cold, Elfano. The child is alert, and I see no wounds, and yet... <sighs> she grows weaker. My spells can do no more. What she needs is a change of clothes and a warm bed. We must hurry back. Not now! Matsya, take the child. It appears we've made enough noise to be heard for miles around. More will be upon us ere long. We make our stand here. Matya, can you take her back to the village? But well, now you're child. the daddy. All, all by myself? You can't be serious! Come on, Matya, we don't have time! The beasts will follow you home unless we stop them here. And so we shall. Be strong, Matsya. Her life is in your hands. Come on, go! Right. I... I can do it. I know you can. We'll keep them busy, Matsya. Go! Quickly! Don't be afraid. Don't 
Don't be afraid. To live is to suffer, to drink of calamity. It is a perilous path. Death lurks in the dark. Oh no! Please don't! No. I'm not afraid! I'm not afraid! Ah. Do not avert your eyes! See! See your life for what it is! See how the hardships make you strong! Every doubt reforged! Oh no, come on! <gasps> I was about to have a heart attack! The divinity? Nay, but one who would deliver thee just the same. Oh! Please, you must save the child. She is all that remains of Nevan and Grasif. Please! Seems the babes <laughs> taken a liking to you. Come on, Estinia. Thou art strong, little one. Let us convey thee to thy home. <laughs> I spied our friends as we flew in. They appeared to be holding their own against the horde. Are we all alright? Right. That's the last of them. We should hurry and find Matsya. <laughs> I have a feeling he'll be fine. He had help from on high. <laughs> I think I'm going to say that one. What, like divine aid? None, like a, a dragon swooping in. Shame I missed it. Estinian, it was you who came to Matia's aid. Yep. I was only along for the ride. Vritra was the one who saw the boy was in need. The two are headed back to the village. Where the worm will honor Ahiwan's wishes and finally reveal himself to his people. Ah, oh, that might actually happen. Perhaps so. Will you go and join them? There's something I need to do first. Alize, don't do something stupid, please. Mervyn gave her life so that her child might live. She deserves better than to be left to drift alone. She deserves to be laid to rest beside her husband, at least. Will you help me? I will. You know I will. Go, I will keep watch until your work is done. Oh, they're going to bury them here. Alize doesn't say anything. Half an hour. We have done what we can. It's for the villagers of Palaka's stand to perform the funeral rite. If nothing else, Mevan and Karasov died as they lived, as themselves and not as beasts. Their souls will find peace in the ethereal sea. To think the day would come when even the sm that smallest of solaces would be discomforting. You're ready then. In that case, let's head to Palaka's stand. No doubt Rutra is awaiting us. Don't be 
afraid. He's a dragon. Rest easy, for all is well here. Young Matsya returned with the babe safe in his arms. Owing to a warm bed, the girl hath already begun to regain her strength. Less joyously received was word of the mother and father's fate, as well as that of their transformed neighbors. How many children of Thalnair must we lose to this calamity? Mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, every death another void that can never be filled. We who survive them must carry the weight of their memory as we strive to regain a semblance of what we have lost. Persafa and Melon's babe is a child of Thamnir as well. I thank you for returning her to us safe. Oh, most great and merciful worm, I have not the words to express my gratitude. They say that were it not for you, Bray Matsya and the child would have been lost to us forever. Long had I heard the rumors that a mighty dragon had forged a pact of friendship with the satrap, but never would I have experienced such a kind and gentle soul. Truth in part, but not in whole. He's looking at us to like, should I tell them? <laughs> Are you sure I, sh I should tell them? No. I'm Uritra, and for years uncounted had this isle served as mine abode. An isle I have ruled over as Satrap, with Ahawan as my loyal servant. Are my ears to be believed? You were the true Satrap all along? Yeah. Nidana! What are you doing here? Oh, wait. Is she taking care of Matsya because, you know, Matsya had his eyes on her? Remember? Yeah, that lovely trunk. Those ears. <laughs> magnificent. <laughs> I heard from the Radiant that you had gone to help the people of Palaka stand in their time of need. And so I and several of my colleagues from the great work came to offer our services. The alchemists have already brewed up some potions for Mavan's daughter. But enough about us. You and your role are the far greater enigma. If you were the true Satrap all along, could it be that young Warshan was created to serve as your emissary? Thou didst suspect the boy was but a smlekrim? A rumor has circulated for many years around the High Crucible that our most skilled alchemists were once commissioned by the Satrap's family in secret to fashion a mammoth indistinguishable from a living boy. Looking at Varshan with that knowledge, I simply put two and two together. She's smart. Mm -hmm. I was not alone in drawing this conclusion, but like me, they no doubt recognized that the Satrap was using the Smlekrum to work more closely with his people and decided not to press the issue. I had always assumed one of Ahawan's associates was manipulating it from afar, though the truth is indeed far more surprising. It's an honor to meet you in the flesh, Masarutra. Pray allow me to express my gratitude. If you had not believed in and given on to us your scales, I do not know where we would be. Thank you, from the bottom of my heart. It was thou and thy fellow alchemists that fashioned this means to unmake the towers. You were the savers not only of Radzad Han, but the star. Far too kind you are, Master Ritra. But the star yet wants for salvation. Once more will my colleagues and I commit the knowledge and resources at our disposal to the mission of aiding the people in this their darkest hour. It would seem this place is in good hands. I would return to see how Radzathan fares. What will you do, Sions? Can we come as well? I worry for the survivors we met at Prusa. Shall we pay them a visit before making our way back? Okay. In that case, might I ask a favor? Nothing too burdensome, I promise. This way. Okay. Where are we going? Witness them. Join the holy matrimony. <laughs> that escalated quickly. 
What a lovely aroma! I wonder what sort of spices those are. Oh, is she cooking or something? Curious, isn't it? The burning sky is so ominous, yet the crackling flames here are somehow calming. Ritra chose to reveal his identity to the villagers of Palaka stand before all others. A wise choice, considering the warm reception. <laughs> he even seemed a little relieved. It remains to be seen how the people of Radzathan will take the news. But if this was any indication, he need not worry. Matsya? Ah, Alia! Running through that dark jungle, there was a time when I thought all was lost. Had Master Rutra and Estinian not arrived when they did? No, I must focus on the good. Mawan's precious daughter is safe and sound, and that's all that matters. Needs to simmer just a little bit longer, I'd say. Why did I add little there? In the meantime, I was hoping I might ask you a few questions. The red sky, these terrible beasts. What in the name of the sisters is happening here in Thavnir? Let me explain. Oh my, that's rather a lot to take in. It would seem the situation is even more grave than we suspected. Thank you, my friend. You, my colleagues and I will use your knowledge to see if it can further our own research. And with that, here we are. A pot of piping hot chai, brewed from my own secret recipe of spices and tea leaves, together with hearty helpings of rich milk and purest sugar. I have made enough for everyone in the village. Might I trouble you to deliver a few cups? The drink has medicinal properties then. Not in the least. The ingredients are quite ordinary. It's so very tasty though, and has a way of lifting the spirits. The spicy aroma and distinctive sweetness of chai is a simple everyday pleasure on our island. Sometimes the best medicine is the simplest. A lovely sentiment, Nidana. By all means, allow us to assist. While you lot distribute hot beverages, I'll do a sweep for errant beasts to slay. A far less arduous task, no doubt. When you have finished, look for me at the wakeful Torana. Okay, Estonian, bye-bye. Look at them all, lazing about. Knowing full well the beasts might strike again at any moment. Do they not realize their lives are in danger? Well, I for one intend to survive. I'm too young to die. Yes, I will leave this island behind if I must. But, but where would I go? Is anywhere safe these days? A cup of chai? Can't you see I have more important things to worry about? No, no, you're right. It's precisely in times like these that we must try to remain calm and steady. I do believe I'll visit the Elder and see what needs to be done. If there's any way I can aid my village and my friends, I will do it. Mm, wait, I know you! You were the one who saved us from those beasts back at the temple. Were it not for you, well, let's not even think about that. At times like this, we mustn't dwell on what might have been, but look to the future. But what future awaits us? How can Radzat Han hope to recover from this? Most of my friends are gone, and I don't know where to turn. Here, have some chai. A cup of chai? Well, if you insist. Ah, oh, that aroma has a way of clearing the mind. Come to think of it, we have faced our fair share of trials in the past as well. And no matter how hard the times, we have always come together as a people united. One day at a time, one step at a time, for that is all any of us can do. Yes, back to work once I have finished this cup. Thank you. I'm sorry, I, I, I just want to be left alone. My best friend and I, we fled the village together. One of the beasts took him and... and... It was all I could do to run. All the while, I could hear this monstrous voice screaming my name. Hmm, this is for me? Ah, oh, we used to drink chai together often. Shared stories over steaming cups after a hard day's work. Thank you, friend. The pain may never pass, but I must press on all the same. For his memory, and for we who must remember. Thank you for delivering the chai, Alia. Did it help the to lift the religious spirits? Yeah, it did. This is heartening to hear indeed. The final days show no signs of abating, but that is all the more reason that we must try to keep our composure. 
Our lives have been forever changed. The people we have lost will never return to us. These tragedies will long weigh on our hearts. But we have the capacity to live with our suffering. To carry the agony till we too join the fallen in death. It's not a surrender, but a recognition. For it is only in acceptance that we find the strength to move forward. As you have finished your deliveries, might I talk with you for a moment? I was curious to know, what has become of Mavan and Karasov's remains? Ah, oh, we buried them. Well, Alize and Af noted. Oh, thank you, friend. Surely they will be able to rest peacefully by each other's side. I and the people of Palaka stand will perform the rites as soon as we are able. As for the child, it will not be easy for her, growing up without her parents. But I promise to do what I can. Once she's able to eat solid food, the fish I catch will help nourish her. Oh, he's going to be the father. He's going to adopt the girl, I think. Well, we have finished delivering the chai. I do believe everyone has a piping hot cup. I could almost believe there is a magic at work, how their attention fades with every sip. Let us pray that Palaka's stand has seen the last of those transformations, at least for now. They are still at risk, as every village in Thalnair like as not. Still, I trust we can leave this place in the care of our friends from the Radiant and the High Crucible. Shall we return to Ratsathan? By all means, do not let us keep you further. There are still many who have need of your wisdom and strength to deliver them from this terrible calamity. And I will do what I can as well. I will bring rations and supplies from Akiali. We have planted to spare. Then let us find Estinian and be on our way. Where did he wander off to again? Aha, wakeful Torana. Near the bridge to Radzathan, as I recall. Very well then. I have apprised Estinian of the situation at Palaka stand, so we needn't have that conversation. Thank you. How do you suppose the others have fared in the capital? I hope things have not been too eventful in our absence. I hope so too. Alphano told me everything. Who well, glad am I to hear the people are safe. Likewise, you'll be pleased to know I found no evidence of lingering beasts in the jungle and ruins. It would seem you finished off the last of them. Trying times yet lie ahead for the people of Thalnir. Fortunately, they have a wise and benevolent satrap to shepherd them through. Speaking of which, I received word from Thancred not a short while ago. He awaits our return to the city on Alzadal's path. Come. There's a lingering sense of desolation here, but that is much preferable to the panic and chaos we saw before. The poor old woman who became a beast said her grandson had gone to Polaka's stand. I hope he survived. It will be a struggle for the people to come to terms with these tragedies, but they are far stronger than you might think. Tankred? It's good to see you safe. Given the skies, it's all too easy to fear for the worst. I'm pleased to report that we have succeeded in quelling the threat here in the city. The beasts have all been felled, and the citizens are safe for now. I also heard from the Radiant that an important proclamation will be made in the city square. Though they said no more than that. But do you have any idea what this is about? Yeah. I have, actually. It's Ritra. So Ritra is finally coming out from behind the curtain. I suppose we too should hear what he has to say. To Megaduta, then. But before that, it would appear that word of the assembly has not yet reached all the citizens. If anyone along the way seems unaware, you'd best enlighten them. Tankard, anything else? I'm sure everyone will hear about it soon enough, but those who don't attend will be kicking themselves for later for missing what's certain to be a historic moment. Uh, are the beasts all gone? I've been hiding and I'm too scared to go out and look. Oh, that's a relief. I thought one of those beasts was going to eat me. I wonder where Warshan is. He's the slowest runner. I hope he got away. Well, he's the quickest flyer. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. He could be with the other people from the palace. Maybe I'll see him in the square. 
Leave me be, please! I swear to you, my flesh tastes absolutely terrible! Oh gods, what are you doing scaring me like that? If we are not quiet, those beasts will find us! Nope. The square, you say? But that's where the satrap was killed! With my very eyes, I saw him crushed in that creature's maw! So many lives lost! Such terrible carnage! And you say there's someone else who would lead Radzat Han instead? Whoever they are, if they say anything to sell the memory of our beloved Satrap, I will make them regret it. Oh, you have... You're in for a treat! Finish rounding up the stragglers? The proclamation will begin shortly. Let's wait here, lest we miss something important. Welcome back, Alia. Alfano told me everything. I was pleased to hear that Ritra has chosen to reveal himself at last. The people of Ratzat Han need a strong and wise satrap more than ever. People are slowly making their way here, but many are still gripped by fear and doubt. Hopefully Ritra's message of hope will resonate strongly enough with the ones willing to listen and spread to every corner of Thavnir. I hear you were able to bring the situation at Palaka's stand under control. Every life lost is a tragedy, but you should take pride in doing what you could. When I assumed command during the earlier panic, I did so instinctively and out of necessity. It was not my place to give orders, but I'm glad the people heeded them. Well, you you are the Exarch after all. I mean, you're used to governing. But now they have need of a true leader, a magnanimous and just satrap who can guide them every step of the way. Fortunately, they're blessed with one such soul. If anyone can protect and guide them through this calamity, it's he. It would seem the people still have lingering doubts, and I cannot blame them. Yet we know what strength is afforded us with one of the first brood on our side. I have faith the citizenry will come to understand and accept him in time. Worm and man, working towards a common goal. Where did I see that before? Look, someone's coming. Yep, yeah, it's Varshan. People of Razat Han, it warms my heart to see so many brave, resilient souls before me. Today, I would share with you a great revelation. But before I do, I must make a humble request. Do what not do be want? alarmed, nor avert your eyes. See the one I unveil for who he is. And know that he means you no harm. Very well. I dare say it can't be worse than the horrors we've already seen. Many thanks. Children are like dragon. People of Radzat Han, I am Vritra, and for years uncounted have this isle served as mine abode. Tis as the Satrap's ally I am known today. I would reveal the truth unto you. Let us hope they accept him. Oh, they will. And how he is bowing his head. Oh. The satrap all along? 
Vashon! I mean... Master Vitra... That... That... Does your divine eye really see all? Nay, child. While my eye hath borne witness to the whole of our nation's history, to its future I am blind as thee. I do not know you, Dragon, but I thank you for speaking the truth to us. As divinities, both Manusha and Riga once joined together, so too do I believe that hand in hand, we can overcome this ordeal and welcome an era of peace. Sight that would have surely brought a smile to his ale's face. Hmm. Yeah. It would. Indeed. Ah. Uh. <laughs> uh. Hello. You're not welcome here. Excuse me. But I must speak with the Sartrap at once. He's literally in front of you. Father! You have suffered dearly of late. Yet you must endeavor to look beyond these losses to the future you yet have. On behalf of the Forum of Charlian, I come with a proposal by which you, the people of Radzathan, might be saved. I say again, I must speak with your satrap. I beseech you, take me to him with all possible haste. I am satrap here. Speak thy proposal. All present shall hear and judge. <laughs> I was not expecting a dragon. <laughs> if I have given offense, then I apologize. First, allow me to share with you what knowledge we have of the phenomenon responsible for your woes. The final days. It is an affliction of stagnancy and rot, sown into the currents of the star. Though the first prominent manifestation was here, in Thavnir, it will invariably spread to every corner of the world. The Forum was forewarned of this apocalypse several centuries ago. 
Thenceforth, my predecessors sought to prepare for the end times in the only conceivable fashion, by securing a means of escape. Escape the star? What madness is this? Oh, yeah, we can do that. It is by no means madness. With the coming of the seventh umbral calamity, the true nature of the red moon Dalamud was revealed. That it was an artificial construct of ancient Alag. But what of the silver moon? This celestial satellite is yet another technological marvel fashioned and maintained by ancient allies. A ship that will sail the heavens and deliver our people from destruction. And by our people, I speak not only of Charlian. We mean to save every man, woman, and child it is within our power to save. Including you, our dear friends of Radzat Han. Recent events necessitate adjustments be made, and quickly, but we can and will escort you safely to the moon. Long has thy forum been allies to Thavnir. I trust thou dost not extend this offer lightly. Yet I wonder, is this truly the way? Is there a future to be built for us beyond this star? Our father deemed the last bastion of hope. It is for that very reason I come before you and your people. To answer any and all of your questions. To offer my assurances and allay your fears. Though, if you wish the best for your people, I advise you to render your decision swiftly. Master Vidra, we believe in you. The children. It's always the children. Dragons. Nidana? Why are you running? Oh, you're still here. What a relief. W what happened? Nidana, what's the matter? Has something happened at Palika Stand? Oh, no, not that I know of. I just hope to hear your thoughts on a theory of mine. Okay. All who undergo the transformation are drained of their ether, yes? What is it then that gives these beasts the strength to carry on as they do? Logically, they must be drawing upon an alternate form of vital energy. That put me in mind of our earlier conversation when I tried to explain the essence which many confuse with ether. The Akasha. 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 Yes, I remember. The unseen gift bestowed from on high. An energy influenced solely by emotion. Yes, yes. In this instance, negative ones set Akasha into motion, thereby infusing the beasts with vitality. I posit this as the mechanism by which the beasts are born and sustained. So I, I wonder something. If you give in to fear and despair, uh -huh. you turn into those beasts. Yeah. What if you feel elevation, happiness too much, joy? What happens then? 
Do you turn into something? Ah, do you still have that flower? Yes, I carry it with me all the time. Oh. Oh, it's black. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Oh, it's gone. If we accept that it once shone bright by drawing upon Akasha, influenced by the thoughts of those nearby, then fear, terror, despair, negative emotions so powerful as to suffocate it, permeated the air in this place. Come on, guys, we need to go back to Labyrinthos to pick another one. <laughs> You must be very careful. The forces which drive the final days may be beyond our ability to perceive. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you like that. At any rate, I will continue my research into Akasha. Do temper your expectations, however. There are sadly few detailed studies upon which I may draw. Formulating a new theory as you have is itself no small feat. I wish you well in your endeavors and pray you take care. Thank you. You stay safe as well, yes? Till next we meet. And we will meet again. Hold you to your word. Yeah. I hope under happier circumstances. Their solution sits ill with me. But if life has taught me anything, it's that there is little to be gained from arguing with Charlians. <laughs> <laughs> we must take it upon ourselves to find a better way. Even were Rutra to equis to their proposal, just how do the Charlians intend to transport the nation's entire populace to the moon? We have no better, safer course of action to offer them than fleeing to the moon. I know this. And yet, Ritra and his people love their home. There must be something we can do. The soldier of the Radiant there, if I'm not mistaken, he accompanied Ahawan to Wanashpati. Could it be that he knew Ritra's identity all along? Probably. He said it closest to him knew already. Under normal circumstances, the forum's proposal would be regarded as sheer madness. But when the sky burns, even madness can sound appealing. Doubtless Ritra is loath to abandon his home, and yet, absent other options, he cannot dismiss the option out of hand. As far as we have come, and after all the horrors we have seen, there is still so much we do not know about the final days. Could it be, as Nidana said, that the cause of this phenomenon is beyond our comprehension? And if so, are we powerless to forestall it? Don't say such things. Greetings, honored scions of the Seventh Dawn. I have a message from His Excellence the Satrap. I'm listening. Brave scions, you have my gratitude for aiding my people in this most trying of times. Alas, matters here at Megaduta prevent me from meeting you all in person. As a token of mine appreciation, I have arranged for a feast to be held in your honor. May it nourish you in preparation for the trials ahead. Such are the words of Master Rutra. The feast he speaks of awaits you at Merides Mehane. Pray make your way there whenever your business here is done. We thank you for your kindness. Indeed, I was hoping we might find a place to discuss our next course of action. And that seems an ideal venue. Ah, and to you. There's someone we had hoped to introduce to you in particular. While I'm loath to detain you further, might you spare a moment of your time? A personal invitation? Knowing full well your services are in the highest demand right now. This must be important. Worry not, we will save some food for you. So take all the time you need. <laughs> Thank you, Alize, For saving food for me. Thank you, friend. Whenever you are ready, please join me in the Aetherite Plaza. I shall go on ahead. Access to the Aetherite you see there has been restricted to a select few ever since the tower first appeared. We sincerely apologize for the inconvenience, but it was deemed too dangerous to permit the free movement of visitors at a time of emergency, a risk we could not take. In light of recent developments, however, the Satrap has decided that such restrictions would only hinder our efforts to combat the final days. 
As such, I would encourage you to attune with the etherite before proceeding along the corridor. Oh, we already, we already did. It did. <laughs> ah, you must be wondering what this place is. You stand in the Hall of the Radiant Host, from where our leadership oversees all of Radzat Han's military operations. Sandrop, our destination, lies just ahead. Who wants to... Oh, wait a moment. Where? Why are there delegates here? Oh my goodness, this music. Welcome to Sandrop. Without further ado, allow me to introduce you to... Aha! So you're the famous Ali Alanai, eh? I knew it the moment you stepped through the door. You have the look of one who has walked through hell. Chilabat, please. You're speaking to the Satrap's honored guest and a savior of our people. Can you not show a modicum of respect? What disrespect is there in paying a fellow warrior a compliment? We are all friends here, or will be soon enough. More formally then, for the benefit of my countrymen. It's a pleasure to have you with us, O oh great champion of Eorzea, scion of the Seventh Dawn, warrior of light, and all-round good egg, I'm sure. What is this place? Who are you? This talk of eggs remind me I'm late for dinner. <laughs> I really want to choose that one. Excuse me. <laughs> A woman after my own heart. I like that. Don't you worry, I'll keep it short. There's just a thing or two we'd like you to remember. First of all, about the room you are standing in now. Radzat Han welcomes delegates from other lands to oversee trade and diplomatic feelings. Then, there are military matters to discuss, which is why all these officers are stationed here in Sandrop. I imagine you are more than familiar with each of the nations they represent, yes? We have got representatives from Doma... Ulda and Alamigo... Limza Lominza. Gridania. And last, but never let it be said least, Ishgard. They are the eyes, ears, and mouths that bridge the distance between Radzat Han and their respective homelands. We have used this brief respite to share the details of our fight with our overseas counterparts. And wouldn't you know it, all of their leaders requested a few words from you specifically. You're a woman in high demand, eh? And so, would you mind regaling us with your own account? Indulge us before you indulge yourself. <laughs> My space! What, what am I getting into now? Are you serious, guys? I, I'm expected. I thank you for the report. The conditions under which men are turned to beasts, the etheric anomalies you have observed, you have given us much to consider. It's concerning that the first transformation apparently occurred before the skies turned red. It's contrary to what one would expect. Thankfully, the information you conveyed to Lucy upon your return from the moon has already proved invaluable. As soon as reports of the calamity here in Thavnir reached the Grand Company of Eorzea and our Far Eastern allies, our leaders knew at once that the final days were indeed upon us. They began taking steps to assess the extent of the phenomenon's spread. Our agents were able to confirm that, for the time being, the skies burn only over the bounty, including this island and Corvos. Why do I have a bad feeling about this? Alas, that is of little comfort. Aye, all throughout Allied lands there have been reports of people transforming into hideous beasts. From what little we have learned, these incidents are similar in nature to that involving the merchant Kalzal. As was the case here, the victims underwent the change prior to the heavens being set ablaze. And so, while the burning skies have yet to manifest beyond the bounty, the transformations do not appear to be subject to any similar restriction. If anyone anyway overcome by despair can turn, then nowhere is safe. That's about the size of it. Speaking of which, we ought to give these creatures a name, don't you think? 
Here in Radzatan, we have taken to calling the first to change, which tend to be the biggest, blasphemies. As fitting an aim as any, to ensure clarity in future communications, we shall urge our comrades to adopt this terminology. Our leaders have taken measures to deal with the threat to the best of our abilities. I, each nation has assembled their own groups of elite soldiers to put down these so-called blasphemies and their spawn as and when they appear. At the same time, they are doing all in their power to put the people's minds at ease and prevent panic and fear from spreading. That said, brave souls with the strength and fortitude to fell these terrible fins are not easily found. Just so, and it's for that very reason that we turn to you. Pray lend us your strength and help us to slay the blasphemies that plague our homelands. Now, now, you don't have to give your reply before dinner. I should also mention that each blasphemy seems to possess wildly different characteristics. What works well against one may serve you poorly against another. So before you go rushing off to save everyone's day, have a word with the delegates. They will tell you what to expect. And with that, I do believe our friend here has a feast to attend. Spare thought for us while you're tucking into all that fine cuisine, eh? Okay, let's go for food. Pray for Givshra about her rudeness. She can be a bit monstrous at times, but it's simply her nature. Anyway, my apologies for keeping you from your hard-earned rest. You will be rejoining your companions, yes? Do you know the way to the Mehani? Yes, I know, I know. <laughs> I know Ratsat Han like the back of my hand. Glad to hear you're becoming familiar with our fair city. You'll be pleased to hear that all drinks are on the house, so order whatever suits your fancy. And with that, I must return to my post. On behalf of all the Radiant Host, I thank you and your friends once more for lending your strength and courage to Ratsat Han in our time of need. We shall endeavor to fight for the good fight to the end. That we might honor Ahavan's legacy and serve Master Ritra well. You have my word that your efforts will not be in vain. Thank you. Can I go to the dinner now? Welcome! When the Satrap asked us to entertain a party of honored guests, I was wondering who it might be. This is a lively surprise, to say the least. By the way, I heard all about Kalzal from your friend Grahatia. I understand there was nothing that could be done, but... I was heartened to hear he meant us no harm. I cannot thank you enough for dispatching the beasts. As the smallest token of our thanks, your food and drink tonight are Merid's treat. Speaking of which, what shall I start you off with? Water. Just, Just water. water. No, no, I want a chai, please. Is your wish? Pray join your friends and I will bring you your drink. Uh, and here it comes, I think. There is a cutscene here. Welcome back. Whatever did the Radiant want with you, pray tell. They had a meeting with me, literally. Our allies have sent military delegates? That's news to me. Mind sharing the details? And here we go. The music, the right? Is now yeah. plague all the realm. It will only get worse if what Father said is true. As it did in Amarant. If that's our model, then shouldn't we expect the effects to grow more severe as it feeds off its own spread? As if people transforming into those monstrosities wasn't bad enough. If the flora and fauna, if the land itself turned against us. No one would survive. Here's your order, friend. Thank you. Mighty kind of you. I got a different one. I chose the spirits. Ah, I want chai. Uh, my warrior of light doesn't really drink. May you find comfort in these dark times. Where do we go from here? I have no idea, Lise. If there's one thing we've learned, fighting blindly and simply reacting to what comes will accomplish nothing. We must find a solution that addresses the fundamental cause. Before our strength is exhausted, before this crisis spirals out of control. Is there something, anything we've overlooked? Hmm. If there is an answer, 
Hydaelyn herself will have it. Twas she who bound Zodiac and forestalled the final days. Alas, we have heard naught from her since the Tower of Babel. Whether she cannot or will not speak, I can only speculate. Can we not go to her through the Anti-Tower instead? Even the flower she gave us is no more. In our time, we called it Elpis. You would do well to remember the name. So advised the Watcher. But what could be the significance of that name? It is entirely unfamiliar to me. Uh, unfamiliar to me too, Ishtola. To me as well. It meant something to the ancients, though. In our time. Most surely, yet I do not recall a single mention of it in the records of Anida. Another dead end. And quite literally. It's not as if there are any ancients living we could go and ask. Not alive as such, but not quite dead. Okay, what do you mean, bro? Elidibus? Elidibus no more. He was absorbed into the tower. He's not dead! Music. Lydibus. Oh my goodness. I sealed him in the white horosite of the Crystal Tower back on the first. Contained within that reservoir of ether that maintains it. Ether that is returned little by little to the sea. Naught may remain of his soul. However, if part of it lingers, we might be able to speak with him there. We're going I back to the first. We can no longer make that journey, but you, my friend, still can. Oh, that will be something. It's worth a try. It would be an opportunity to look in on the others as well, if there's truly no other way. I'm going to say the second one. Yeah. Cool. But I care about the people on the first. Thank you. My friend, that would mean much to me. If nothing else, should we learn the first is safe, we'll have that much more reason to keep fighting the good fight. That said, the odds are not in our favor, to say the least. <laughs> Which is why we're fortunate to have Uriange up there on the moon, working hard to make all the necessary preparations for our departure, should it come to us. And why we have nothing to lose by staying the course till the last instant. Indeed. To the last, let us all do what we can. I will consult with Master Matoya and see if she knows of a way to reach... Oh, this music hits now. Sea. And I will visit the nation's leaders and attempt to ascertain how far the final days have progressed elsewhere. Keep me abreast of your findings. I can seek out and slay the worst of the immediate threats. Only to slow the spread. Unease, terror, despair. Try as we might to suppress them, these emotions will return to harry us time and time again. But when they do, remember this. Your friends and loved ones are out there somewhere, sharing in your struggle. You are not alone. Yeah, it's my loved words. ones are ri literally here. So ends the brief respite before the next revelation. Yes, so much left for you to see. Where beginning ends and end begins. What do you mean, Amit? 